Hello everyone, how are you? It is B, and we are here to go over the individual sign readings for this second full moon in Capricorn. Now I would advise all of you to go back and listen to the first full moon in Capricorn. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, what we're going to be talking about here, and as you know, when the planets move and the sun and the moon moves, there are different planets that get activated. But the same energy applies as it relates to the moon energy itself. Now, I did do the preface, and again, I'd like to thank everyone for bearing with me as uh, I took care of some things uh, here in the meantime, but I do want to get this out to you. Remember, full moon energies uh, generally happen within about three days before and up to 10 days later as it relates to any, any completions, endings, or things needing to be addressed. And so I'll get into that. But let's go ahead and uh, let's get started here. I will put the timestamps below. So just want to thank all of you. And also, I did get some donations. So thank you so very much for those of you who donated. And thank you so much for being part of this family. For those of you who have left and come back to this family, thank you so very much. I hope that this energy and I hope that uh, th this guidance will help you navigate, you know, the planetary uh, storms and turmoils and even blessings uh, that may come out with this full moon in Capricorn. Uh, the second one, and this is the blue moon. So it's kind of like, you know, once in a blue moon. I've never done this before. Um, doing something different or taking a different approach as it relates to Capricorn characteristics, as it relates to a Capricorn individual, as it relates to uh, definitely a father figure, as it relates to commitments, loyalties, as well as status and career. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's get into it. We are going to start out with the beautiful Capricorns. Hi, Capricorns. I hope you are well. Well, this is definitely your full moon. So a big ending, a big transition, something needing to be addressed or something coming to fruition for you personally. And so for you personally, anytime we have a full moon, there can be emotions that come to the surface Capricorn. Now, a lot of Capricorns are not very excited when emotions come up to the surface because they tend to consider themselves to be very calm, cool, and collected. And it doesn't mean that if you do have emotions coming up to the surface that you're a bad person, not at all. It simply means that there may have been some energies you've been shoving down for a long time that needed to make themselves known. To you, this may look like a weakness, but perhaps to others that know you, uh, this is a strength and they're happy to see you embrace your emotions. So this could be coming up for some of you Capricorns, but you do have an ending, a culmination, or something needing to be addressed specifically about your identity, your status, your career, uh, and your commitments and your loyalties and who you're committed to and who you're loyal to. Now, the sun, of course, is opposite. The sun is where all of the ego energy is. It's where all of the life force energy is. And for you, this is in your seventh house of cancer, and this is the energy of the other person in your life. Mm -hmm. So you're really, really focused on the other person. This could be, you know, your partner. This could be uh, a family member. This could be a daughter, a son. This could be a mother figure in your life. Also with the sun in the seventh, you are discovering Capricorn, other empress energies around you and what a true empress is. Like I said earlier with the preface, all the fakers are being revealed. Trust me, you're going to see people for their true colors just as much as others are going to be seeing uh, your true colors as well. <clears throat> because this particular moon is conjunct Pluto. So for you, this is in your second house. But again, please remember to listen to the sign before yours and the sign after yours to get a complete picture. So this is conjunct Pluto, and for you, 
This is your second house of self-value, the money you make from the company you work for, the money you make from the business you own, the body politic, creature comforts, stubbornness. Something in this area of your life is undergoing massive transformation and massive destruction, which directly involves your identity. You may see and you may hear about a destructive force coming out with your friend groups, your networks, your associations. Maybe you thought you could trust somebody and now you're seeing their true colors and they've been talking smack behind your back. Now you know who is, you know, in line with what it is you're trying to create and who's actually sabotaging you. So it's important during this full moon to pay very, very close attention to the people around you and understand that it is okay if you have a network, a group, or an association that is falling away from you because it just doesn't serve you anymore. Now, this moon is also trining Mars, and for you, this is in your sixth house. Uh, this is in the house of Gemini. <clears throat> so Mars in Gemini is aggressive, stalker energy coming in with communication. It's aggressive energy with communication. It's aggressive energy with social media. It's aggressive energy with possibly a Gemini. It's aggressive energy dealing with uh, short distance travel, you know, neighborhoods, uh, the truth versus the lie. Always when you have Mars in your six, please be careful with short distance travel. Do not drive aggressively by any means because other people around you will be driving aggressively. Now, what this could also mean if the sixth house is all about the daily duties, the workaday duties, uh, being a good advisor, getting a good advisor, also health and well-being. So you might be a little bit more um, hyped up to go work out. That could be to help you with, you know, how your body looks, your physical vessel. But for others of you Capricorns, when I talk about stalker energy, this could be someone stalking you that you actually work with. Um, for some reason, their true colors are coming out. They are trying to potentially confuse you with uh, communication. They're trying to manipulate you with communication. They're trying to create illusions regarding communication. And the thing is, is because you're so focused on the other people in your life and the mother figure in your life and your own identity, they feel as though you're not paying attention to them anymore. And so what's happening is, is they are getting very aggressive with you. This is where the true colors come out, okay? So you're seeing someone, you know, perhaps, you know, you were, you had a, a feeling for them like, okay, they're my sister in arms, they're my brother in arms, they're a good friend of mine. Uh, maybe there were some romantic feelings there, maybe a partnership. But now you're seeing their true colors and you're also seeing that they are a manipulator, a deceiver, and a liar, okay? <clears throat> so, Capricorns, be careful. I'm seeing 2-2 two, two on the clock right now. 2-2-2 two, two, two on the clock. It's angel number. 2-2-2 two, two, two on the clock. And so, um, you are going to be seeing this, okay? You're going to be seeing that there has been some sort of um, aggressive energy coming at you and you know you're checking your phone and it's like you know your wife or your you know partner or whatever or your family member you know they text you once every couple days they just check in but this person from work that perhaps maybe you crossed a line with I don't know or maybe you just got to be friends with um, all of a sudden they are changing they are turning into a stalker. They're turning into someone who's very aggressive. They send you 10, 12, 15, 20 texts a day. It's exhausting. You're trying to figure out a way to get away from this energy because you don't want it around you. And it is causing confusion around you. You feel like you have been misled. You feel like someone had an ulterior motive. 
that could be coming through as well. But you are facing significant, significant changes, uh, Capricorn, regarding your identity. So just be aware of that, okay? And I do see some... Um, let me see what else I see here really quick that I can tell you. Yeah, there could be... There could be a move coming up for some of you. Definitely. All right. So I'm going to leave that here, Capricorn. Thank you so much uh, for listening to this transmission. And again, please do not forget to listen to Aquarius as well as Sagittarius. <clears throat> Hello, Aquarius. How are you? Well, Aquarius, for you, you have a big ending, a big... Uh, culmination or something needing to be addressed in your house of Pisces, which is the 12th house. And um, for you, uh, this exists in Capricorn because that is the house before yours. Hold on a second. I'm going to get my dogs. <coughs> Okay, sorry about that, Aquarius. Um, so yeah, so you've got something from the past that is being illuminated here. And it's being illuminated about how you manage your everyday, uh, how you manage your relationships at work, how you manage your health and your well-being, um, uh, possibly dealing with Pisces people or Virgo people. And it seems to me that there is some sort of hidden energy regarding status, regarding career commitments and loyalties. Someone may not be exactly truthful here or they're trying to hide something. They're, not, they're trying not to let people know something. Like they're not being completely honest, okay? They're trying to keep something hidden, but this is going to come out. So if there's been a clandestine affair, this is going to come out. Everybody's going to know about it. A lot of gossip can happen with the moon in the 12th. Uh, and this moon is also conjuncting Pluto, and Pluto is in your first house. Now, not for all of you, okay? It may still be in Capricorn. So like I said, listen to Pisces. Listen to Capricorn, okay? You just need to do that because this is really an early Pluto placement. We're at zero degrees. So not all Aquarians will be affected in this way. Definitely listen to Pisces, okay? But so for you, Aquarius, for some of you, this is definitely in your first house. Uh, massive death and rebirth phases regarding your identity. Uh, this Your identity may be directly affected by what is going on. As it relates to hopes, wishes, dreams, goals, networks, and associations, toxic energy may be bubbling up about yourself. Uh, you could be doing a lot of self-re-evaluation about who you are and what you let into your life. And you're realizing that you have a lot of toxic behaviors that need to be addressed. And the moon also is trining Mars. So there is a lot of aggressive um, rocket booster energy, cutting energy coming through, romance, children, creativity, risk-taking, and pets. You may have a child that's being very aggressive with you. You may have pets that are being very aggressive for whatever reason. Don't worry about it. In the next 10 days, they're going to settle down. If they seem to not be getting along or they're having issues, just let it play out, okay? But uh, be aware that the energy is certainly out there. This could also be a need or some sort of directing energy, directive energy to reestablish romance in your life, to bring more romance into your life, maybe to take a risk with something regarding romance or even a Leo person. Because the moon is also sextiling Neptune. So you have been very confused 
about your own self-value and your boundarylessness and your creativity that encompasses your self-value, the money you make from the company you work for, the money you make from the business you own, the body politic creature comforts. And this is sextiling that energy of whatever is being illuminated and ended or coming to fruition or culmination with what has been hidden. Okay, so something may have been hidden in order for you, possibly Aquarius, to uh, create some sort of confusion or illusion or deception. But what's happening right now is that whatever it was that was hidden is now affecting your very own self-value. There could be a level of guilt here. There could be a level of mismanaging something, someone, possibly your finances, how you put value on certain things, what you thought was a creature comfort. But just be aware that right now, Aquarius, you are undergoing a great transformation. You're changing your networks and your associations, your friend groups, and people are looking at you quite differently because you're undergoing a death and rebirth phase. And do not be surprised, Aquarius, if you change up uh, friend groups and other friends are like, well, where have you been, Aquarius? I haven't seen you in a long time. We miss you. We want to be around you. And Aquarius, your response may be, you know, um, I'm on this current transformation in my life. And yeah, you know, I know I, I would always go out and I would always party and I would always have drinks and stay out late, but I'm changing my lifestyle. I'm, you know, going to sleep in. I'm going to go to bed early. I'm going to change, you know, my habits as far as what I put in my body. And, you know, I'll catch up with you guys later, but I'm just not into the partying scene as much anymore. So that could be coming up for some of you Aquarians at this full moon because it may be having a direct impact on your status, your career, your commitments, and your loyalties. So just be aware of that. All right, Aquarius. Okay, Aquarius, please make sure you also listen to Capricorn as well as Pisces. Pisces, for you, the sun is in your fifth house and the moon is in your 11th. Beautiful energy, but it is a little bit of a difficult energy, and I'll tell you why. Uh, the moon in the 11th is all about hopes, wishes, dreams, goals, networks, and associations. The cosmos, uh, astrology, all of that. So something is coming to fruition, ending, or needing to be addressed here. And so you may not have the same hope, wish, dream, or goal that you had three weeks ago, four weeks ago, five weeks ago, a month ago. You may also be changing and bringing in more influential people with very high status, um, very strong indications of commitments and loyalties as well. And for some of you, even though you may have let a hope, a wish, a dream, or a goal go away, you are re-establishing a new hope, wish, dream, goal, network, or association, possibly related to status, career, commitments, and loyalties, or the father in your life, the father figure, or a Capricorn. And the thing is, is you're really focused on your fifth house. You're focused on uh, possibly a Leo here, could be, but you're mostly focused on romance, children, creativity, risk-taking, pets, leadership, a big heart, even some drama. So you might be illuminating that or there might be some energy around that that needs to be addressed because this is what is feeding in to whatever that completion phase or whatever that phase was that you were dealing with in your 11th house that I had just mentioned. And so 
What's happening here is that the toxicity is coming from the conjunction uh, regarding your 12th house with Pluto being activated in the 12th. This means that there's a lot of toxic energies that have come up from the past, things that were hidden, clandestine affairs, finding out about things that you did not know were going on or existed. Uh, this could also be about your own psychic abilities. Do not be surprised, Pisces, if your psychic abilities go a little bit on the dark side here. You might be getting visions about, you know, some things going on in different timelines that are not the easiest for you to deal with. Um, there may be, you know, like that death toxic energy that you just are staying away from because you know that if you look at it or if you put it into your um if you put it into your field, it's it's going to be manifested. So you're trying to stay away from it as much as possible. Um, there could be an energy here also, since you do rule the 12th and Pluto is in your 12th. You may be finding out about toxic substances. Uh, maybe you're going more organic. Uh, whatever might be going on here, you're you're really cutting down on addictions and toxic substances because it's causing this awakening within you that what you're doing is probably not in your best interest. And the moon is also trining Mars. So there is a lot of aggressive and get her done energy around home, family, being the mother, being the divine feminine, the, uh, the empress energy. You're very aggressive about it. You are really stepping in to your empress and your divine feminine energy. Whether you're a masculine or a feminine doesn't matter. You're just stepping into that divine feminine energy a little bit more. This is also aggressive energy around the home. This could be, remember, Mars is cutting. So you may be cutting things in the home. You could be cutting in a new door. You could be cutting out a wall. You could be cutting branches. You could be cutting anything having to do with the home. Okay, so just be aware of that. And, uh, you know, Pisces, this moon is also sextiling Neptune. So maybe you had a thought or an illusion as it related to what you really wanted in life. Or maybe you had a hope, a wish, a dream, or a goal, and you were just deluding yourself. You were just confusing yourself. You were just, you know, setting yourself up for failure because, you know, maybe your heads were in the cloud. Okay, and um, your heads were in the clouds. <laughs> maybe some of you have, you know, maybe some of you have Gemini in your chart or maybe Libra. You know, you've got the, the dual energies. But, um, but anyway, so this is directly affecting your identity right now and who you are. You're trying to reestablish who you really, really are. You're creative, you're loving, you're your boundless, your um, psychic, all of this, you are being seen for who you really are. The thing about it is, is what you hoped for and wished for, and maybe people you hung out with, you are seeing that maybe that was not in your best interest. And so you're kind of backing away from that as you reestablish who you really are, okay? Because there's been a lot of confusion about your identity and you you want to make sure you're clear when you come out of this and you have that Pisces new moon that's going to be coming up. Um, I'm sorry, not Pisces new moon, the Pisces full moon coming up, that there is no, there's no question that when the sun enters Virgo uh, in September, that there's no question on who you are as a person. You're going to have to get very straight with this. And right around that September time frame is when I believe the uh, Mercury retrograde is going to be finished. And also we will be very, very close to Saturn slowing down at the end of September going into October. So just be aware of that as well, Pisces. All right, Pisces, thank you so much for listening. Please make sure you listen to Aquarius as well as Aries.
Aries for you. Wow, what do we got for the Aries? Well, Aries, you've got something ending, culminating, or coming to fruition in your house of status, career, commitments, loyalties, Capricorn people, as well as uh, father figures. So they may be going through an ending or you may be going through an ending. Uh, big transitions, big changes, okay? It could be related to a move, okay, Aries, because the sun is in your fourth house. So now we've got the Empress energy, the mother energy, the home energy, the family energy. So a lot of focus on the home and the family right now as the father figure goes through this massive change or this massive reboot uh, as it relates to status, career, commitments, and loyalties. Because this moon is conjuncting Pluto. And for you, this is your 11th house. Now the thing is, is if you are dealing with some sort of father figure, they could be going through a massive destruction regarding hopes, wishes, dreams, goals, networks, and associations. A lot of times when Pluto is in the 11th, toxic energies come out of friend groups, lots of gossip, lots of manipulation, illusions, lies, deceit. So you might be dealing with that or your father figure in your life might be dealing that or the Capricorn might be dealing with that but you are definitely seeing a lot of toxicity being purged out of these friend groups as well as hopes wishes dreams and goals because the moon is also trining Mars so Mars right now is in the third house there could be a lot of aggressive communication aggressive um social media, talking, contracts, agreements, negotiations, short distance travel, siblings, the neighborhood, the truth versus the lie, a lot of cutting truth coming out and maybe some cutting lies are coming out as well. Uh, but this could be very, very clear, concise and cutting communication with a trying to Mars as it relates to a Capricorn, a father figure, status, career, commitments, or loyalties. And the thing about this is, Aries, is that uh, the energy here with that moon is that it is sextiling Neptune, which is in the 12th house. So a lot of secrets coming out about a Capricorn person, a father figure, um, a status, a career, a commitment, a loyalty, a lot of hidden things coming out, a lot of illusion, a lot of deceit, a lot of lies, but there could also be um, a lot of psychic abilities as well. Uh, communication regarding those psychic abilities, the energy to look back on your past and what you've created, maybe how you deluded yourself or maybe how you were confused about something from your past. This is now coming out to be cleared out utilizing that trine with Mars because that trine with Mars is looking at the sextile with Neptune and saying, hey, I'm not going to be lied to anymore. I'm not going to be deceived anymore. I'm not going to have the wool pulled over my eyes anymore. And I'm going to communicate it about it. And I'm going to communicate to you about it. And I'm going to communicate to everybody about it. Or people are communicating to you. It doesn't have to be you specifically doing all of the communication, but it is certainly present here. All right, so you do have a lot of focus on the home. Uh, you've got focus on the empress energy, the emperor energy. Uh, got a lot of toxicity coming up from the friend groups and maybe a hope, a wish, a dream, or a goal. A lot of cutting communication as well. But this is to break apart any illusions from the past. So Aries, thank you so very much. Please make sure you listen to Pisces as well as Taurus to give you a much more well-rounded reading. Taurus. Hello, Taurus. Sun, moon, rising, Venus, Jupiter. What do we have going on with you? Well, Taurus, what we've got going on with you is we have a moon, full moon, status, career, commitment, loyalty, father figure, undergoing a great culmination, ending, or something needing to be addressed about the ninth house of Sagittarius. 
And the ninth house of Sagittarius rules foreign people, foreign lands, people politics, legal, law, the occult, long distance travel, optimism, um, expansiveness, okay? So something is ending here. Something is culminating. Something needs to be addressed here regarding the ninth house because your focus right now is on your third house. The third house is the house of Gemini and the sun is illuminating this area for you. And so for you, this is coming through possibly talking a lot about home and family and the mother, but it could also be a lot of talk and a lot of contracts, agreements, negotiations, renegotiating deals, um, short distance travel. This is where your focus is. And because your focus is here, you have something ending with the long distance travel. You have something ending with a foreign person or a foreign land. And the thing is, is that this moon is conjuncting Pluto. So there is some sort of toxicity or a destruction coming through a father figure, a Capricorn, some sort of status, some sort of career, some sort of commitment or loyalty is undergoing great transformation. It may have to be destroyed in order for it to be rebuilt again. And a lot of this had to do possibly with um, some sort of commitment, loyalty, status, or career regarding foreign people, regarding foreign lands, regarding travel, regarding expansion, regarding snake oil salesman energy as well. And that moon is also trining Mars. So the thing about this is, is something happened here, Taurus, in the house that you rule, which is the second house. And this is coming through cutting, um, cutting energy, aggressive energy, get her done energy, warrior energy regarding your self-value or the money you make from the company you work for, the money you make from the business you own, the body politic, creature comforts, um, the earth, high dollar possessions. For some of you, Taurus, you are selling high dollar possessions. You're getting rid of them. For some of you, Tauruses, you are facing right now at your work, you are facing potential layoffs, okay? Um, there could be cuts that are being made, but this could also be where, um, you're just very aggressive about what you should earn and how much money you should be making. So you could be making that, uh, appeal to your boss for a raise or a promotion. The thing is, is that this, uh, this full moon is sextiling Neptune. And so, just hold on a minute, guys. My dog needs to go outside. So interesting. So Ezra loves laying in the sun, and uh, Brandon loves laying in the air conditioning. <laughs> so it was Ezra that wanted to go outside and lay on the couch outside. But anyway, um, we have a sextile to Neptune here with this moon, this completion energy, this ending, or something coming to fruition. And this was some sort of confusion or illusion that someone had regarding a hope, a wish, a dream, a goal, a network, or an association. Uh, there could have been lies here. There could have also been self-deception, okay? Maybe you thought someone was, you know, uh, doing something um, with, you know, a, a friend or a group, and it turns out that perhaps that was not the case. Maybe there's some truth that has come out about that to give you more clarity. So that could be happening here as well. So... But you're dealing with a lot of Gemini energy, Sagittarius energy, Capricorn energy, your own energy, your Taurus energy, as well as Aquarius energy throughout this full moon. So just be aware that that's that type of energy that you're going to be dealing with here. 
So Taurus, thank you so much for listening. Please make sure you listen to Aries as well as Gemini. Gemini for you. Well, 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 Gemini, you are blessed because you do have Jupiter in your sign right now. Also be careful when you do have Jupiter in your sign, the likelihood of you gaining weight is going to be high or wanting to eat more than perhaps is wise. Uh, just be aware of that as well. But when you have Jupiter in your sign, that is, that is abundant blessings. Everything blows up. Everything is given to you on a silver platter. It's it's so beautiful. So take a lot of that lucky energy uh, from Jupiter being in your sign. That's very, very important right now. You're going to be getting a lot of offers, more money's coming in, donations, um, uh, just abundance overall. So just be aware of that. But what you have happening here, you've got something coming to fruition, ending or culminating as it relates to your eighth house of Scorpio. You may have put an end to uh, some sort of behavior that was taking place uh, with a father figure or a Capricorn in your life or something to do with status, career, commitments, or loyalties um, because the eighth house rules joint finances, intimacy, sex, death, taxes, rebirth, revenge, jealousy, obsession, stalking energy, toxicity. You put an end to that. Many of you Geminis also, if you did have an addiction, you are really breaking that addiction down and you are getting you are getting on top of things. Like if you were addicted to alcohol, addicted to food, addicted to whatever, um, you are probably weaning yourself off right now or you're cutting it down or you're just going cold turkey. So wow, Geminis, look at that. Um but this could be that there could be some sort of, and this is somewhat surprising. In fact, this is very surprising. This is very surprising because you have an energy here. As you're pulling away from this Capricorn energy or from this status, this career, this commitment, this loyalty, this father figure, it's like they want to give you even more. They want to go above and beyond. So for some of you Geminis, you may have been giving quite a bit to a Capricorn person, a father figure. Maybe you were just being very quiet. You were, you know, doing what they told you. You know, it's kind of like that song by Rage Against the Machine. You better do what they told you. Um, which is interesting that that just came up because that's what this energy is uh but actually it's called killing in the name of i don't particularly care for the fact that it's um about police brutality but you know everybody has their life that they're living and they see things through their own eyes but um yeah it's kind of like that song but anyway uh so that moon energy so that's the completion phase right so it's like you gave something up, but now you're getting something back even more. And it's adding to the value of you, okay? Someone is finally seeing your value. Someone is finally putting energy into your self-value. You could be uh, really focused on and getting a lot of help with uh, money that you make from the company you own, the business you run, the business you work for. Um, high dollar possessions. You may be getting a gift, a high dollar gift. All right, Gemini. I mean, you could be right around this full moon. And it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's helping with something regarding your creature comforts. Like, this is a person that takes care of something for you so you don't have to pay for it f with someone else or it makes it so comfortable with where you're at that you just feel like you're kind of living in your own paradise that could be 
And the thing about it is, Gemini, there is an energy here that this moon is coming through a conjunction with Pluto. And so what's happening is there's a big destruction or a massive, massive transformation um, in the house of friends, networks, associations, and hopes, wishes, dreams, and goals. And, but this, this, this also relates to foreign people, foreign lands, people, politics, legal and law, the occult, higher education, uh, the bigger picture, expansion, um, snake oil salesman as well. So I think something might be coming through here where you are seeing somebody's true colors. They may be foreign from you. Um, someone that you love or someone that you care for may also be seeing someone else's true colors that is foreign from them. And they're undergoing a massive destruction because of this. This could also be legal issues that are causing a massive transformation in your life or somebody else's life. And this moon is also whatever is ending or culminating uh, as it relates to this uh, joint finances, intimacy, sex, death, taxes, rebirth, revenge, obsession, whatever it is. Um, this has caused some sort of cut, some sort of warrior-like energy, getter-done energy regarding your identity. So what I'm sensing here, Gemini, is you may have been giving just a lot of time and attention to a father figure or a Capricorn. And you may be have given them like, you know, all of your energy, your time, always wanting to win them over. But now that you've pulled your energy back, you're focused more on yourself. You're very determined and disciplined with yourself. When you have Mars in the first house, this can bring in a lot of energy, a lot of an increase in metabolism, and you definitely are going to need that with Jupiter in your sign. So you may want to work out more or take care of yourself more or present yourself just a little bit differently, a little bit more high end. Um, maybe you want to uh, present yourself in such a way that you are looked at as the warrior, you know, the warrior woman, the warrior man. Okay, that could be happening here. Also, please be careful when you have the um, the moon conjuncting, I'm sorry, the moon trining Mars in the first. Um, there could be the cutting out, like I said, the cutting out of the intimacy or the cutting out of one way of, of being supported into another way of being supported. But it could also be where you are just cutting all the time. Like you could be, you could be cutting carrots. You could be cutting celery. You could be cutting wood. You could be cutting carpet. You could be cutting whatever. Okay, and um, just be careful when handling uh, sharp objects, please. Uh, the other thing here is that this full moon is sextiling Neptune. So this, this is interesting because this is the 10th house for you. And this is where a Capricorn, a father figure, status, career, commitments, loyalties, they were not being their true selves. They were trying to put out an illusion of being a certain way when all it was was a mask in order to keep up the illusion. So with the full moon sextiling Neptune here, it feels to me like this father figure or this Capricorn, they have now been forced, or even a Pisces person, they have now been forced to reveal their true selves because their mask came off. They were caught, they were, um, they were put on notice, uh, people weren't putting up with their crap anymore, they weren't putting up with their illusions, their deceit, their lies, uh, their hidden agendas. 
But this is also where a father figure might be showing you great creativity, creation energy, creativity energy. Um, this could be um, creation really with anything, to be honest, Gemini. This could be like creation with music, art. Um, you may discover a father figure or a Capricorn was far more creative than you thought, or a Pisces person was far more creative than you thought. Just something to think on, Gemini. Definitely want to uh, look into that. But Gemini also, um, there could be something going on here regarding really needing to clear up any type of illusions of who you actually are to people you're talking to regarding your 10th house of status, career, commitments, and loyalties as well. So Geminis, please do not forget to listen to Taurus as well as Cancer. Cancers, for you, you have the energy of the full moon in Capricorn in your seventh house. So for many of you Cancers, there is going to be an ending, a culmination, or something coming to fruition in the next 20 to 30 days uh, as it relates to this Capricorn energy, the other person in your life. It could be a father figure. It could be your ex, maybe an ex-husband. Um how you give energy to other people as well. Regarding your status, regarding your career, regarding your commitments, and regarding your loyalties. So you may be changing up the rules of engagement a little bit here, Cancers. With this Capricorn, this father figure, or the other person in your life, or just equality, fairness, and justice. There could be legal issues going on here as well. Because right now, Cancers, you're really, really focused on you. You're focused on your divine feminine energy. Even if you're a masculine, you're focused on your divine feminine energy. So this is something that you're saying, you know what? I am not going to go gently into that good night. I'm a good mother. I'm a good divine feminine. I, or I'm going to rebalance my feminine and my masculine. I'm going to focus on my home and I'm going to focus on my family. And that's beautiful. Because what's happening here, whatever this ending is, with this Capricorn, this status, this career, this commitment, this loyalty, this father figure, whatever ending is coming through here, it's coming through and causing a great transformation or a destruction regarding joint finances, intimacy, sex, death, taxes, rebirth, revenge, obsession, possession. Now, I will say this, Cancers, you've got to be careful when Pluto is in the eighth. Why? You're more prone to want to get revenge on someone for having harmed you in the past. Be careful. That can backfire. And the reason why I say that is because you've got Mars in your 12th. Okay? So Mars in the 12th is a very aggressive energy that is coming from, you know, any type of past situation past illusions, past deceptions, all of that. So you've got to be careful if you're hiding something in order to get revenge on somebody else because it can backfire. So please, please be careful. The Mars energy is very cutting energy. <clears throat> so if you are found out and you have hidden anything, it's going to be very cutting. It's not going to be like I said, there's a boomerang effect or there's a backfire. It, um, what am I hearing? Don't cut off your nose to spite your face. Okay? Be careful. you got to be careful on this one. You could also be getting a lot of aggressive um, energies coming through your psychic abilities as well in your dream state. You could also be getting very creative with, you know, your... You could be getting very aggressive with your creations is what I am seeing here. But again, be careful of manipulative or vengeful energy. You know, sometimes when Mars is in the 12th, 
it can reveal itself as an incessant need based off of a delusional state of mind. So if you are going to get aggressive about something from your past, please make sure that you got the facts in front of you and you are making decisions based on fact and not as much feeling because feelings can distort the situation. So we also have this moon sextiling up against the ninth house and the ninth house is ruled by Sagittarius. And so for you, there's been a lot of illusion, a lot of boundaryless energy, a lot of limited standards or expectations or rules that need to be followed regarding foreign people, foreign lands, long distance travel, uh, legal law, the occult, higher education, looking at the bigger picture, snake oil salesmen. Again, uh, be careful, especially if you're in any legal um, situation right now, because um, they're going to see right through the lies. So they're going to see through your lies or they're going to see through somebody else's lies. The snake oil salesman, the mask is falling off or the snake oil saleswoman, <laughs> you know, the mask could be falling off here. And it may actually be more about revenge than it is about an actual legal statute or standard. So please be careful with this. Dot your I's, cross your T's for sure. But again, travel may have brought in a lot of illusion or there may not have been appropriate boundaries around travel, possibly in the past uh, that could be happening here. But this is what I have for you beautiful Cancers. So Cancers, please make sure you're listening to Leo as well as Gemini. Hello, Leo. How are you? Uh, let's go ahead and let's get into your energy. So, um, Leo, what's going on with you is that you have a full moon in your sixth house. Now, the full moon is the full moon in Capricorn. This is about, you know, status, career, commitments, and loyalties. And father figures as well. Capricorn people. So, Leo, for you, something is ending, culminating, or needing to be addressed in this area. So... This area of your life is your everyday, it's your workaday duties, it's your uh, health and well-being, it's how you get advice from others and how others get advice from you. It is the energy of a good counselor. Physician energy as well could be coming through here. So what I'm seeing here, Leo, is you're changing something about your everyday. And this has to do with a commitment or a loyalty. It could even have something to do with how you looked at a good friend in your social circle as someone that you could get advice from or as someone that could advise you or you them, and you're cutting them out. You are now seeing perhaps this person has a lot of toxic tendencies and this person has been giving advice to you or someone you love to manipulate them, to coerce them, to make them miserable and to keep them stuck, okay? So I just wanna let you know that because the sun is lighting up your 12th house right now. And when the sun lights up your 12th, all that was hidden is now revealed. Be careful with this. If you've been hiding anything, Leo, it's coming out. I'm telling you right now. If, you know, for a lot of you Leos, you might be digging into the deepest and darkest crevices of your mind to relinquish yourself from some sort of toxic behavior uh, that you have had in the past. Um, if there's been a clandestine affair, this is coming out. If there has been um, an unconditional love energy, this also comes out. You may be discovering who's really there for you and who's just giving you information to manipulate and coerce you. So you are dealing with that type of energy right now. 
and Leo, this may have something to do with the home and the family. Okay? It may have something to do with the mother figure or empress figures in your life. So, so maybe for some of you Leos, you're friends with um, a woman who is a mother and um, you're getting really close. You know, you're having these intimate uh, conversations and, you know, you're with somebody else. And this person who you're talking to, who's this mother figure, you may be getting indications and you may be getting signs and you may be seeing her mask falling off where she was living vicariously through you, where she wanted to separate you from everybody that you love so that she could have you just for herself and to manipulate, to get energy out of. You may be discovering that this is a female narcissist, Leo. This could be happening for some of you. So just be aware of that as well. And the thing is, and the reason why this is coming up is Pluto is in your seventh house of the other. Okay, Leo, this could be an ex. This could be a friend. This could be um, a child. Anybody that is other from you, usually this is a closer connection, um, but it could just have to do with even a business partnership. It could deal with equality, fairness, and justice as well. You might be discovering, Leo, some things about the justice system or the legal system that's just very, very toxic. And um, you're trying to manage and negotiate on your own so that you don't have to go through that. But here's the thing, Leo, some of you have already been in it uh, with this toxic energy of the other. Um, this does not necessarily just have to be your other. It could be a very close loved one or family member's other that is also revealing themselves to be extremely toxic, extremely controlling. They might be stalking you. They might be badgering you or being aggressive with you. And you are just like, I cannot do this anymore. I'm not going to do this anymore. You might be, you might be ghosting someone. Absolutely. I think you're cutting somebody out of your friend group with Mars in your 11th. Uh, it could be one friend, it could be three friends, it could be eight friends, it could be a group of people, but you are definitely cutting them out because they're getting way too aggressive with you and you're like, I'm really feeling uncomfortable right now. This is making me feel really uncomfortable. Like I feel like I may have to call and get a restraining order on this person or, you know, I feel like this person's been lying to me or deceiving me or, you know, causing issues in my life wanting me to be separated from the people I love so I would be isolated. So that is certainly coming through here because you have had a lot of illusions and boundarylessness with who you're intimate with. You needed to put those boundaries up, Leo, and you didn't do it. Or someone didn't do it. Okay? And this could also be boundaries with how you give to others, how you support others, how others support you. And also the confusion surrounding what is revenge, what is stalking, what is inappropriate, what is toxic, what is, you know, you're asking yourself that question. And guess what? You are being illuminated with this energy through whatever this ending is in your daily duties. You, that is being illuminated for you right now. The reason I had this ending with my daily duties, the reason I had the ending with how I get advice from others and maybe physicians and my health and my well-being and how I manage my every day and who I'm committed to and who I'm loyal to and who I'm a father to or whatever, the reason a lot of this happened is because I didn't put boundaries up when I should have. And I let a lot of toxic nasty, gross energies into my life. And I may now be facing another karmic cycle or someone I love could be facing another karmic cycle. Okay, Leos, that is what I have for you. I wish you the best. Please make sure you listen to Cancer as well as Virgo. Hello, Virgo. How are you? Let's get into your energy for this full moon in Capricorn. So Virgo, for you, um, you have got an ending. 
something culminating or something coming to fruition as it relates to romance, children, creativity, risk-taking, pets, leadership, and a big heart. And speaking of pets, I am going to go get my dog from outside. Got to feed them after I finish here, so they're getting ready. So, um, Virgo, yeah. So something could be culminating, ending, or needing to be addressed in your fifth house of romance, children, creativity, risk-taking, pets, leadership, a big heart, also drama, possibly related to a father figure, a commitment, a loyalty, or something related to a Capricorn person or status and career, okay? And that is what this this big energy is for you because right now your focus at the present time Virgo is on your 11th house of hopes wishes dreams goals networks associations um, astrology definitely that's where your focus is at so because your focus is on your 11th something is going to end in your fifth and the interesting part about this is is it is because something destroyed the fifth, okay? So what destroyed the fifth? Well, it was your activities with your sixth house or the activities of somebody else's sixth house. You know, work duties, daily duties, errands, um, advice, getting advice from others, you getting advice from them, them getting advice from you, physician energy as well, health and well-being, <clears throat> as well as counselor energy, dotting the I's, crossing the T's. So Virgo, that is what is transforming. That is what caused this destruction, okay, in your fifth house. And that's why you are now focused on some sort of hope, wish, dream, or goal. It's kind of like it's a renewal of some sort of hope, wish, dream, goal, network, or association as it relates to the home, as it relates to the family, or as it relates to an empress figure in your life or the divine feminine. And the thing is, is that this full moon has caused the cutting out or the aggression regarding a father figure, a Capricorn person, something dealing with status, career, commitments, or loyalties. There's a lot of aggression here. There's a lot of cutting out here. And it's because someone did not understand how to love someone. They were always in the romantic energy. They were never in the committed, loyal bond energy. Um, they're very confused about what it means to be committed. They're very confused about what it means to be loyal. They're very confused about other people in their life. They would open themselves up to so many different energies and all they were doing were creating soul ties that was creating a bunch of karma. So someone is coming to the realization the reason why this situation has happened with romance, children, creativity, risk-taking, pets, leadership, and a big heart is because of the confusion coming through and the boundarylessness coming through one's own ability to understand what it means to be in a committed and loyal bond or to have equality, fairness, and justice. Okay, so that is what is going on for you, Virgos. Virgos, please make sure you listen to Libra as well as Leo. And let's move on to Libra. Libra, for you, you have this um, full moon energy in your fourth house. Okay, so something is ending, culminating, or needing to be addressed as it relates to the home. So you may have some home issues that have to be addressed. Um, could be with a mother figure as well. Um, and this is the fourth house, and the full moon is in the house of the father. So this could definitely be a mother-father dynamic that needs to end, something like that. 
Uh, this could also be an ending as it relates to some sort of you know, Capricorn person in your life, uh, status, career, commitment, or loyalty. And this directly affects you with your fourth house of home and family. So something is ending, culminating, or needing to be addressed in this area of your life. Because right now, you are uber-focused, Libra. You are uber-focused on your 10th house. You're focused on your own fatherhood, if you happen to be a father. You're focused on your status. You're focused on your career. You're focused on all of your commitments and all of your loyalties. You're re-establishing this now due to something ending in the fourth house. And there may have been a situation here, Libra, where you let some toxic energies in to your fifth house of romance, children, creativity, risk-taking, pets, leadership, a big heart, uh, drama even. Some of you Librans let in a lot of drama into your romantic life or someone did that to you. Uh, this could also be drama with children. Uh, this could also be... Um, a lot of toxic energies where someone in your friend group wanted to have more than a friendship with you and they wanted to have like a romantic fling with you and this brought in a lot of toxic toxic energies we're talking a lot of karma here too so if any of you libras ezra 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 Ezra, that's enough, please. Um, so if any of you Libras brought in any uh, really toxic energies or you entertained um, someone that perhaps was in a committed bond or you were in a committed bond and you entertained like this little romantic fling, whether you did anything physical with them or not, this has caused a buttload of karma. This has caused karma beyond karma, okay? That's what Pluto does because what happens is, is once the karma is delivered, part of that karma is seeing how toxic uh, what you introduced into your life or what someone introduced into their life, how toxic that was for the uh, partnership or the goal or the mission, whatever that may be. And... The thing is, is this person may have been foreign from you. Uh, this person may have been uh, of a different culture than you. Uh, they may travel a lot. You may travel a lot. Uh, this could also be related to legal and law as well. Um, higher education. So, you know, kids going to university or you going into a higher education type of mode. Uh, this could also be related to optimism and expansion but it could also be snake oil salesmen and snake oil saleswomen so what's happening with this full moon because you have an ending with your home and with your family you are seeing the toxicity of this uh, friend or this group uh, that was trying to control you manipulate you um, get you into a compromising situation to have a romantic fling with you you're seeing who this is now and um you are cutting them out you are completely cutting them out you could be cutting them off cutting them out ghosting them not returning their calls completely ignoring them avoiding them at all costs uh, that could be what's going on um if you are like for example if you are a salesperson and you have to travel with this person for sales, you're taking a different plane, you're taking a different flight, you're taking a different way to work, you're, you know, you guys get the gist of what I'm saying, okay? Uh, this could also be about how children are going to be traveling towards you or you towards them and what that agreement is. And again, the reason why this ending is happening with your home, with your family, uh, with your uh, father energy or with a commitment, a loyalty, a status, or a career. And the feeling I'm getting from this, Libra, is because you did not put boundaries up where you should have as it relates to your sixth house, okay? As it relates to the everyday, as it relates to work, 
as it relates to um, the past, the hidden. Um, again, this could have been a work a work fling, you know, like a work affair, like I'll meet you at the bar, you know, texting, you know, um, uh, being very, you know, intimate maybe. And again, it doesn't mean that you had to do anything physical, but it means that you entertained it. And this is what released the karma or this is what released the karma for someone that you know, because again, if it's not happening to you, it's happening around you. So get you're getting those boundaries back up now because it caused a loss in your foundation. It caused a loss with a committed and loyal partner. It caused a loss with your home and your family. It caused a loss with an empress energy. Oh my gosh. It caused a loss with the divine feminine. It caused a loss with the fatherhood energy. It caused a loss with your status in your career, like how people look at you. Because, you know, sometimes when Pluto is in your fifth, uh, the risk-taking energy can come out. And this can be gossip in um, a group of people or, you know, networks or associations. And that gets out, which then causes that loss. And it puts the spotlight on your status, on your career, on your commitments, and on your loyalties. So just be aware of that, Libra, okay? Overall, not bad. I mean, you're really looking at um, a great feeling of abundance and illumination and focus in your status, in your career, in your commitments, and in your loyalties, but you had to go through that loss first, that tower moment in your fifth house first, before you truly recognized what that true commitment, that true loyalty is, and what caused that loss, and what is going to be cut out because of that Libra. Okay, Libra, don't forget to listen to Virgo as well as Scorpio. All right, Scorpio, for you, you have got an ending in your third house. Yeah, somebody you were talking to, they are not talking to you anymore. You are not talking to them anymore. Uh, that is over. This could have been a father figure. This could have been a Capricorn person. This could be someone that maybe you were committed and loyal to or they were committed and loyal to you. Um, this could have been a situation regarding status or career as well. Okay, so there is the end of some sort of communication, a contract, an agreement, a negotiation maybe even a short distance travel, um, something to do with siblings or the truth versus the lie. I have to be honest with you, Scorpio, there could be somebody that you guys seem to be the one this is happening to. I don't know if you remember uh, the uh, information uh, that I brought up about how uh, someone's going to send a text to the wrong person and then that person sees it and it changes everything. Scorpio, this may be you. Uh, I would definitely watch out for um, you know texts that are being sent to the wrong person, emails that are being sent to the wrong person, and there's some agenda energy in there, or there's some damning energy or toxic energy in there as well. So just be aware of that. So something is ending, culminating, or being addressed in this area of your life. Uh, you may be reaching out to someone, and maybe it's a Capricorn, and you're saying, you know, why aren't you talking to me? Uh, I haven't heard from you in such a long time. What's going on? You know, I feel like you're avoiding me. Um, that Capricorn may just be gone. Okay, I'm just letting you know. That Capricorn may just be gone, and they're not coming back. And um, they just got a lot of stuff going on right now. Okay? So just be aware of that. When we have a full moon in Capricorn, remember, Capricorns can end up leaving people's lives. Okay, it just happens. 
or their the energy that they shared with them before has changed or has switched in some way shape or form guys please be quiet please be quiet um because right now scorpio your focus is on your ninth house which is the house of sagittarius and this is all about foreign people foreign lands long distance travel um higher education legal law the occult uh, expansion as well as snake oil salesmen and snake oil women okay saleswomen so be aware that there is some energy here and a lot of it you know legal and law as well so for some of you scorpios you're dealing with the legal system right now and there may be something here about you dealing with the legal system but you not being able to say something to someone or you may be not able to express or you may not be able to say what you want to say or maybe there's some sort of gag order something like that could be happening here because the reason why this communication has been um, removed or this capricorn has been removed from your life or this capricorn you've been talking to whatever it is uh, the reason they've been removed is because they're facing a massive transformation a death and rebirth phase regarding the uh, empress energy in their life the mother figure in their life the divine feminine the home and the family and um they how do i describe this they don't want to be looked at like they cannot be trusted they don't want to be looked at like they're having an affair they don't want to be looked at like they're doing something behind somebody's back so you know there may like i said there may have been entertaining of some sort of you know um work work affair here there may have been entertaining of that but the thing about it is is that um, if it was with a Capricorn, that's just not happening anymore. That's ending. Um, because there was some sort of realization. There was some sort of energy coming in through Mars in the eighth house. Now, this could be you. This could be them. But someone realized that they were entertaining something. It was, you know, potentially some sort of uh, communication it was some sort of like romantic, like boundaryless energy. And the reason why I say that is because you do have your fifth house activated uh, with Neptune here. So very important to understand that. But um, they're cutting it out. They are absolutely cutting it out with Mars in the eighth or you're cutting it out with Mars in the eighth. Again, you could be a Libra. You could be a Sagittarius because remember, these energies are kind of on the on the on the fence right because they're right at that zero degree mark so so anyway whoever it was mars comes into the eighth and mars basically says i am going to cut out and i am going to be a warrior as it relates to how i get my support who i get my support from intimacy who i'm intimate with sex death taxes rebirth revenge obsession stalking toxicity i'm cutting all of that out i'm cutting all of that out so Scorpio, if you were toxic, you're getting cut out. If they were toxic, you're cutting them out. Because there was a boundaryless energy here. There was a delusional energy with romance, children, creativity, risk-taking, pets, leadership, a big heart, and drama. Okay, So someone did not have their boundaries up in this area of life. And they have decided... I have got to get my boundaries up. I am not making a mistake like this again. I lost so much. I lost my ability to have a solid contract agreement negotiation. I lost an opportunity maybe with a Gemini. Um, I screwed up, you know, my, my fatherhood, my commitment, my loyalty, my status, and my career. I, I have to course correct. I have to redirect. So that may be coming up for some of you Scorpios. And Scorpios, please do not forget to listen to both Libra and Sagittarius.
Sagittarius, last but not least, how are you, my beautiful Saggies? Let's get into what is going on with you with this full moon. So the full moon is in Capricorn, so there could be an ending of culmination or something needing to be addressed about a father figure, a Capricorn status, career, commitment, or loyalty. And for you, this is in your second house. So this directly affects your self-value. It affects your the money you make from the company you work for, the money you make from the business you own, creature comforts, the body politic, high dollar possessions. So something here is coming into that fruition point or the ending point. And the thing is, is what you're focused on right now, Sagittarius, is giving support as well as getting support from others. There is a big reciprocal energy here, uh, Sagittarius. So there could be a Scorpio involved with this, or there may be the illumination of Scorpio characteristics, such as the joint finances, the intimacy, the support, the sex, the death, the taxes, the rebirth, the revenge, the obsession, the stalking, the toxicity. A lot of you Sagittariuses are going to see exactly who has been toxic and who has been um, uh, basically stalking you. Somebody, I'm going to tell you, Sagittarius, there might be somebody stalking you. You might be stalking somebody. I mean, you know, it, it may just be one of those love bomb things, but I mean, it, it is coming up here. And the person, Sagittarius, that you were, um, that was toxic in your life, that you are now realizing was toxic, was someone you were talking to on the regular. This was someone you were communicating with, you had social media with, or uh, social groups with. Um, this was, you know, a friend group, a friend. Um, it could have been uh, related to some sort of you telling others or other tell others telling you what you want to hear. Okay, this is where the toxicity comes in in the third house is when someone lies or manipulates someone else just to get their way and then when it comes to time to pay the piper somebody can't you know somebody can't cash the checks that they were writing with their mouth right okay checks they can't cash so um their mouth was writing checks they can't cash and so that may be the energy for some of you Sagittariuses that you're looking at here. Like someone said that they were going to do something or you said you were going to do something, but then someone always finds an excuse or someone always finds a way to destroy it or there's always some sort of energy that comes in to cause some massive uh, chaos or destruction. All right. Uh, this could also be um, that you could be ending hanging out with a social group, Sagittarius. You could be en ending that because um, there's too much toxicity in this communication that you're having with someone. You're seeing their true colors, their mask is coming off. You're realizing that they're possibly turning on you. Um, this may affect, you know, your self-value, the money you make from the company you work for, the money you make for the business you own, the body politic, creature comforts, high dollar possessions. And it, it may feel as though people are ganging up on you, targeting you. And, you know, this directly relates to your status, your career, your commitments, your loyalties, your, your identity, your, like your father identity. So um, something may be getting out here and you're not very happy about it. And you're just like cutting somebody off because of that. Um, again, as you're cutting them off, they're going to want to stalk you, stalk you, stalk you, stalk you. But you're now seeing how toxic and how um, just almost evil this person is because they were wearing a mask. And now that the mask has fallen off, it is clear to you where the karma came from okay and um and yeah so what you're doing Sagittarius is you're taking that knife Mars right now is in Gemini you are taking a knife to that communication with the other person in your life the person that you are confiding in um, a business partnership you could be going and getting a different job you could be moving you could be saying I am out of here 
um, there's an energy, again, it's an energy of stalking and you feel like you're being pushed out of like a home or you're being pushed out of a city or you're being pushed out of a business or you're being pushed out of a job. You feel like it's so toxic. I How did I not see this before? It is just so toxic. How did I not see this before? I have got people who I have confided in who are now turning against me and I feel like the only thing I can do right now is run. This is the only option I have. So this could be happening, but this could also be Sagittarius where you are being very aggressive towards potentially uh, someone that's very valuable to you, uh, someone that you share a lot with, someone that you may have financial interests with, um, definitely could be a partner could be a partner. You're getting even more and more aggressive with that partner. You're getting even more and more involved with that partner. You're reaching out to that partner more. The reason why you are is because someone else's mask fell off, possibly through some sort of communication or some sort of uh, change in energy because you had a lot of illusions and you had a lot of boundaryless energy around your fourth house of home, family, and the empress energy. So you may have been confused uh, regarding what a divine feminine is or what an empress is or, you know, uh, the appropriate functioning of home and family. And you let the guard down in this area when you should have put the guard up. You know, you may have let someone in to conversations with you about your home, about your family, about your significant other, about your children, and you are realizing what a mistake that is. So Sagittarius right now, your energy is one of, you know, um, rebuilding something possibly with a uh, loyal partner or a partner or a child or a mother figure or an empress due to the fact that either you or someone else had really, really bad boundaries regarding communication, regarding self-value, regarding intimacy, regarding getting support, all of those things. So just be aware of that. Uh, but anyway, I do see many of you Sagittariuses, I, I do see this. You are leaving a job or you are going into a different division because there's some sort of toxic energy here that's trying to keep you down or is stalking you and you feel like you're trying to avoid that at all costs. All right, Sagis. All right, everyone. And Sagis, please make sure you listen to Capricorn as well as Scorpio. All right, everyone. I wish you the best. Much light, much love, and many blessings and members your reading uh, for the extended is going to be coming up next. I wish all of you the best. Take care. Love you.